Good day everyone, how are you out there in Cyberland? I'm doing fabulous here at Merlin Community Baptist Church. We have a great lesson for you today. It's called Saving Money. Saving Money? Say it like that. Saving Money? Saving Money. Story about saving money. I have saved money before and what did I save up for? To buy some silver. I love silver. Silver is fun. Um, it's I make jewelry with it. And so uh, not only can I use it, but if I don't use it, I still have silver and I get to hold it. Ah, feel the weight. Ooh, silver. All right, that's enough story about silver. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2. So go ahead and grab your Bibles out. I'll give you a second to grab that. I'm going to take a sip out of my wonderfully new cup that a kid in the youth group made. He's taking a class at uh, the college, welding, made this out of stainless steel. Thank you, Ian. If you want one of these, I can uh, see if he'll commission some. Um, maybe, maybe not. It's like two pounds of stainless steel. I don't really know how much it weighs, but it's heavy. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, here we go. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside some money in keeping with his income. Save it up so that when I come, no collection will have to be made. Mm. This is, here we go. Yeah, this is good. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for clarity of the biblical truth that you are trying to teach us today. We ask that you open our, our hearts and our minds and, and allow us to um, grasp these concepts and use them in our, our daily lives to further your kingdom. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's just jump right in. Let's get started. Here we go. Observations. I love to start out with those. Uh, here's some observations I observed. And I wish we could um, interact together because I absolutely love hearing other people's observations, um, not just giving mine. Um, many times observations are completely different from person to person, and it can really open up and um, deepen a, a verse or uh, change even the meaning of it. Um, so first observation, Paul never used the word tithe here. Never use the word tithe when describing giving. Even though he uh, gives more attention to giving than any other New Testament writer. thought that was quite interesting. Um, and we, and you, I'll let you do the back, back story of the verse. You know, read front and back of it so you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, that's part your part of this study is to do some studying. Um, second observation I see is giving should be a systematic weekly practice on Sunday when the church meets together. That's what he's saying. He's trying to save up some money to take to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, and uh, he's writing these letters saying, hey, start now so when I show up, we don't have to, you know, go, hey, we need this much money right now. We can just show up and boom, bam, boom, bam, okay? So he's saying give, giving should be a systematic weekly thing. Boom, boom, boom. Saving all week. Remember, so this is partially giving and saving. Uh, but he's saying save up all week specifically for giving for this cause. Remember in uh, Jerusalem, it was very rough time. Poor uh, people were starving. Um no shelters, clothing, things, you know, that we take for granted every day. Observation number three. Giving savings were to be proportionate, okay, in keeping with one's income. So if you only have this much income, don't be given this much or saving this much because, well, you can't. But if you have this much, yeah, you could be saving this much and giving this much. So it's in proportionate 
it's a, it's a funny word, proportionate to one's income. There we go. <clears throat> Observation number four. The income of some, which I just kind of dis discussed, will be... Um, the income of some will permit the amount each portion will be, if that made sense. One will be able to give more, the other will be able to give less, but it's still in proportion to the amount. Okay? Um, so some can give a little bit more, some can give a little bit less. Number five. This is important. Very important. This was important because it was supposed to be a unified ministry with each person participating. That's why it's in proportionate to one's income. It's not supposed to be burdensome for either people. One who has much, one who has, excuse me, not as much. Okay, but that's the most important part. It's a unified ministry for believers, right? Unified, regardless of one's income, it's a unified. That's why this works really well. And that's what keeps the lights on in the church. That's what, you know, pays the janitor and the yard maintenance people. And I mean, there's lots of money it takes to run a church also uh giving to others it's not it's not necessarily saying all of this has to go to the church he's talking about he's actually asking this church to save up money to take it somewhere else it's for uh missions we know that these people over here need something so let's save up and and get it for them Get them, get them uh, back up on their feet, right? Like Christ does. We start sinking in the water and he lifts us up so we can stand firm on even water. Um, let's see what else we got. So he's, again, he's writing to this church saying, save up so that when I come time, when it comes time to um, for me to show up and take this contribution, to the saints in Jerusalem, uh, it will. There won't be no last-minute uh, collection. It'll be uh, made uh, out of a heart of gladness, not out of um, grudgingly. Like, ah, oh, really? We got to give more. I, I brought how much I could, but we need more. So if we do it over time, it does add up and it builds up nicely. And things can actually be done. So if he were to just have shown up and said, "Okay, we need a bunch of money to go to Jerusalem," it would it would be only one week's worth. So, yeah, interesting. And that is a huge part of um, us being prepared. This is the application part of this lesson. Uh, God wants us to save. God wants us to be prepared. Uh, and the, yes, that does mean prepared financially as well. We're to be prepared to give reason for the hope in our lives. Uh, we are to be prepared to help others. And yes, finances can contribute to a lot of that helping. Say I need to help somebody move. Well, I got to have gas in my car. I got to have a car. I got to have insurance. You know, all of these things deal with money. Now, we talked about last week uh, that it's the love of money that is the root of evil, not money itself. So it's where we, how we check our money, if we're loving it and we're sleeping with it next to our pillow. Ooh, I love you, money. Mm, money, money. Silver. Ooh, there's some conviction there. Um, yeah, it's when we start loving it more than others, loving it more than God, that's where the problem begins. And we, we know that as Christ followers, but sometimes we get confused. So I hope this lesson helped, this application 
we are to be savers. Um, imagine if all Christ followers had an abundance of finances. Oh my goodness. Think of what we could do. Think of the change that we could incur in our communities, in other communities, overseas communities, um, sending more missionaries to communities that have, may never even have heard of Jesus. Or maybe they have, but they just need a little help. They need a well dug, drilled. They need fresh water just to live. So imagine, think about if everybody in our church was had an abundance of finances. And then multiply that by all the churches in Grants Pass. And then multiply that by all the churches in the U.S. Oh my goodness. Wow, that would be amazing. All right, let's uh, let's close in prayer and we'll, uh, we'll get going and we'll see you next week. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray for the ability to help others. And Lord, we know that finances is a big part of helping others. We ask that you um, guide us in our finances, guide us in what we need to be saving for, what we should be spending our money on, what we shouldn't be spending our money on, and allow us to have the strength to say, you know what, I don't need that third coffee today from Dutch Bros or Starbucks or wherever it is. I'm not, yeah. Help us to be more Christ-like and to live like no one else so that later in life we can live like no one else, as Dave Ramsey says, Lord. Help us to um, help others. That's our goal here with our finances. Um, you have given it all to us, and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, so think about that this week. Uh, read a little bit above and below the verse that we just read today and kind of get an overview of what is exactly being talked about. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. And hope everyone has a wonderful day. We'll see you next week. Remember, Saturday is family day, snow day. We're going to be going to the snow. So make sure you either call the church office or get signed up for the band app. It's a great app and it will tell you all the information. Um, just like we had to actually, uh, sorry, I got to, we had a change in the place we were going, so it was super easy just to go boom, bam, boom on band, and it sends out to everybody. Um, because we, on the internet, it said it was right there off the off the, the road, and we talked to the ranger, and he said it's about a two-mile hike to where we were going, so we decided to change it up. Um, so be posted, I believe it's Table Mountain we're going to. And it's about the same distance, so can't wait to have snowballs thrown at me. I'm sure that's going to happen like years past, um, not by choice. Uh, last couple times I'd been dragged out of the warm, warming shed and pelted by about 50 snowballs. I have pictures to prove it, so if you think I'm joking, ask to see the pictures. I should post a picture on this. Okay, have a wonderful day. Bye.